Over 200,000 Iraqis protested against the U.S. military presence in their country on Friday, demanding American forces leave as requested by the Arab nation's parliament in early January after President Donald Trump ordered the assassination of Iranian military commander Qasem Soleimani during the general's visit to Iraq on July 3rd. Quote, we don't need any foreign troops to be in Iraq. We need Iraq for Iraqis. An employee of the Mil uh, Ministry of Trade in Baghdad told the New York Times. Uh, hey, the Iraqis don't want us there. I don't think they've wanted us there in a very, very long time. Uh, I think uh, the charade that America is all about uh, democracy and building freedom zones in Iraq and being as uh, uh, Iraq's going to be a new freedom, democratic, loving nation. Uh, they don't care about that when Iraq democratically says U.S. GTFO and the Iraqi citizens in numbers uh, reaching nearly a quarter million march out in the street and say, U.S., get out. Uh, I expect this will have zero effect. Uh, I expect the United States will ignore this, and I also expect that you will not hear this uh, in much of the mainstream press. Although they, they did report on it in the New York Times. Um, Iraqis don't want us there. We need to leave. Uh, there's no, the only reason that we're there is uh, to saber rattle and bolster and uh, aggravate tensions with Iran and with Syria. Uh, it's, a, it's become a base of operation uh, for most of our war crimes that go throughout the Middle East. And I'm going to continue to say that because I, there, none of our actions in the Middle East over the last two decades have been legal. Yeah. None of them. Uh, there, there is a potentially a corner case that can be made for attempting to uh, find terrorists in the mountainous regions of Afghanistan, and that's about the extent of anything that there is any legal argument that supports. That's on, it. On top of that, when we, when John was John DCK Punk was on the show a, a while ago, and we talked about this. He made a point that the other part of this is the military-industrial complex must churn on. And how you can, with a war zone like this, it's like, well, I'm a private company and I want U.S. dollars. How do I turn around like $30 million a month to my account? How do you do that uh, and fund things? Well, if in this zip code you have to keep building and sending stuff that no one needs, no one wants, et cetera, et cetera, um, you can do that through war. Again, war for those who go down that path, the war profiteers, the military industrial complex, the defense contractors, War is insanely profitable, and they are very good ever since World War II at maintaining that element. It's why we build the F-35, not because we need to, not because of any other reason than it costs a lot of money to make, and a lot of people make, or a few people make a lot of money, and they get to make a lot of jobs that would do better elsewhere where Iraq, from our point of view, is, you know, we're an empire. We, we be empire in. And again, China is in the midst of actually having a better version of empire. And we've talked about this before, but Roman Empire, we're going to go in and just kill everyone in this area and then give our soldiers uh, farming land. And they're going to grow up little, uh, little new Romans. And those of you that survive will let you become citizens eventually if you completely, if you become Roman. Um, then you have the British model, um, that form of empire, or the, really colonialism. The, the colonialist, let's just say the European model, which is, I'm going to go to where you are, I'm going to take my super advanced military that you have no chance of defeating, and I'm going to have it control uh, your government, and you're going to give us the products that we want, um, basically for free. And the U.S. model of empire is... We're going to get someone, you're either going to do exactly what we want, or we're going to overthrow your government, democratic or not, and we're going to put our own person in charge who happens to be a, um, subservient. a, a, a subservient uh, member of your country. We're going to elevate to the level of dictator, which is part of the reason why we're allied with 76% of all dictatorships. And then he's going to give us either the oil or the lithium or whatever resource it is so we can... You know, all the roads lead to Rome, all the roads lead to America. Those get turned into stuff. We make a lot of money off of it. And then he can do whatever he wants as dictator. doesn't matter what happens to the citizens of that country. And now the new Chinese model of empire is 
like for example for Iraq oh I'm really it looks like America has just destroyed your entire country for over a decade you know what we're gonna do for you Iraq we're gonna do for you countries in Africa we're gonna build a beautiful new infrastructure for you we're gonna build everything that you need to have a beautiful export economy all you have to do is pay for it and here's some high interest loans it's almost like student loans but completely mm -hmm. uh, uh maxed out and so when we get to a point where it's like oh we built all this stuff for you and you can't pay back the loans don't worry uh just give us uh half of your copper uh, just let or us oil or, or lithium oil, or, or whatever yeah. natural resource. It's a, again every time we the empire's done, it's a better version than previous. And so, what's going to happen? America is going to spend all this blood on this soil, and they Iraq has just signed an agreement with the Belt and Road Agreement with China, mm -hmm. and so China is going to reap the rewards of all of this because America destroys really, really effectively, brings people into this terrible subservient state. It's actually really funny in a sense. That's what we as America said the Russians did in the Cold War, except we're doing it now. And instead of us being the builders, like with the Marshall Plan, it's China. Super ironic. Right. So uh, one last point I wanted to make about this is when the United States government says such and such government over there is bad, it's a dictator, the people hate him, uh, let's go topple him. That's all to serve exactly what Daniel's talking about. And an event like this shows the United States is completely vapid in their argument. They don't care about what the people want. They're going to do what is in America's financial interest in the military industrial complex, financial interest, when you have 200,000 Iraqis saying, America, get out, and we ignore it, that's what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, we do have a super chat. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to, wanted to call out uh, Anna Bird, retired, says, uh, universality for the First Amendment is just as crucial as Medicare for all. Same logic applies. Yes, I completely agree. This is in reference to uh, Julian Assange's story that we were just covering. Um, that's totally appropriate, and it uh, also applies to things like uh, food stamps, housing programs, uh, public libraries, college tuition, you know, means-tested programs have a problem, universal programs succeed. Libraries. I, I heard this really great argument now, mm. while we're on this talk, uh, sure. topic, and it was like, you know, to, to the Pete Buttigieg argument of like, well, we don't want to let the rich people go to college for, for free, and then it's like, so if Jeff Bezos walked into a library, would you charge him, what, $1,000 to rent a library, to borrow a library book? How much, how much is the markup for rich people to borrow library books? Yeah. And that again, sounds ridiculous on its face because it's a library and everyone yeah. knows it's a dollar for a library yeah. card and you get to borrow library books. And even on that note, it goes like the, it's a false argument. It's a fake concern. It's a faux concern. It's a bullshit concern that is completely made up and is nothing more than a talking point illustrated right there. Because again, I don't want rich kids going to have free tuition on our dime, even though those same rich kids are paying for 10 other people, including themselves. What a dumb ar argument. I really, if we ever get someone that we're able to, if we have a politician that ever says that, we're going to be like, no, that's a bullshit. That's not a real argument. Give me something better. Yeah. So, guys. Yeah, I would ask him that. Would you say the same thing about libraries? Yeah. How rich do you need to be for the okay. cost of a library card to be increased? It's a good question. It's a great follow-up. It's a great, mm -hmm. people need to ask that. 